Handel. And I, I, really lovely music. And uh, I was observing to uh, my friend, the pet vet himself, uh, Liam Fitzsimons, that one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen, classically lovely, gorgeous woman, kind of woman that makes me sad to be 70. <laughs> How are you this morning? Not too bad at all, Ron. Yeah, busy day ahead of you. Not too bad. Our nurse is off today, so there's not that much booked in. <coughs> uh, yeah. Your whole, your centre of operation is over on Patrick Street there. And well, that's correct. People are coming and going to you all the time. And uh, we remind the people of the kind of uh, the flow of animals that come to you. Unusual animals sometimes, sometimes just normal run of things. It's majority normal run of things. Hamsters, rabbits would be considered exotic in your <laughs> Uh, you see the odd, very, very odd snake, the very, very odd spider or lizard, but yeah. they're few and far between. Horses, calves, lambs, dogs, cats would mm. be our mainstay. Main thing. Could you do much with a spider that's brought to you? There's a challenge for you. Go to the textbooks. Go to the textbooks. Yeah. Or else there's a very good pet shop in Belfast. There is. I, that's uh, that deals in exotics and I would often ring them for advice. Yeah. And you, when, when someone presents with a with a spider, say, do you kind of go, now, how am I going to do this? What have I got to do? Hard to work with. You know, Hard tiny. to work with. <coughs> Pet connection in the town is also very good with exotics. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you uh, anaesthetize them, first of all, before even being able to Never had them? to. Never? No. It's the rats are the biggest problem for me. Why is a rat a big problem to you? It's the fear. It's overcoming the initial, ooh. <laughs> You don't like rats? No, I don't no. like rats at all. No. But they're actually quite nice. Once you come overcome the fear of handling, ah, yeah. they're actually quite tactile and they're quite intelligent. Yeah. But it's just a long, leathery tail sort of. Yeah, yeah. We used to farm them in Africa and then for eating. For, for food, cooking. yeah. Yeah, for food. And the, the people actually loved, loved them. That like wasn't the brown rat that we have here. No, oh, well a black it's kind of a black rat. Black rat. Yeah, <coughs> it's just a, a bush rat, really, you know. But uh, what kind of ailments would rats present with? Basically anything that we anything that we get or any other animal can get, mm. any other mammal. Mm. So they can get pneumonia, they can get lumps and bumps. They're quite prone to cancer as they get older. Most rodents are, for some mm. reason. Mm. Uh, long teeth was the other thing. Their yeah. teeth tend to grow on unless there's something to gnaw on, like rabbits My, and yeah. hamsters. And My pigs. teeth have gone that way a wee bit. The gum peels back as you grow older. You become, it's a, it's a kind of a thing. It's, it's pre-skeletal time where you're, your, 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 your flesh is sort of receding, <coughs> your teeth, are, your gums are going back, and it's only a, a, a hop and a skip <coughs> until you're back in your, back, you're a skeleton again, and that's it. So I hope it'll not be for a little while. But uh, the, the, the news this morning, I was reading it there, about the likelihood or possibility of a puma on the loose in the morns. That's maybe unlikely, I would have thought. Maybe so now, but a couple of years ago when the legislation changed, for the Dangerous Animals Act. Uh, there were quite a few big cats in captivity here. And when the law changed, they required licensing and special accommodation. And a lot of people would have thrown them out rather than actually keep them. And it was an easy way of disposing of them. Uh, so it's unlikely, but not impossible. Yeah, I remember with Michael Philpot uh, of the USPCA, I went up to North Antrim uh, with my television crew for RTEs nationwide. We went on the trail of a big cat that had been reported about the place. Now, I have to say we didn't find it. It would be highly unlikely to see it. Highly mm, unlikely. Yeah. For during the day, they'll go into shrubbery thickets and lie low, and they'll hunt at night. Well, what we did see was the scavenged carcasses of creatures of sheep. And uh, it was cleaned uh, right down to the skeletal, the, the sternum area, the bones, the can of bones and uh, right down to that and the, the scattering of uh, wool all around the place. And it, it seemed to me that it was greater damage th uh, done than I would normally expect a fox to be able to inflict, you know. It also more eaten, probably. Oh, it was a huge amount of eating. Yeah, a fox, yeah. a fox is actually quite small, so it won't eat that much. <coughs> Eats and wastes. Exactly, whereas the big cats now would be, they devour everything. I noticed during the week the, uh, the commencement of the cull, the badger cull over in England. Uh, the jury's still out on whether the badger transmits the uh, bovine tuberculosis, isn't it? Badgers have little or no resistance to TB when, but when they become infected. 
So once they become infected, they'll excrete TB in their feces and in their urine. They become incontinent, basically. Uh, but if TB wasn't in the kettle, it would not be in the badger. So yeah. it's sort of, it'll be come back 60 years ago when blaming humans for, or 80 years ago for blaming humans for transmitting bovine tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was there in humans, but the bovine is the main source of TB. Mm -hmm. Culling, I don't know. Over here we're vaccinating. And there oh have been really? several yeah. trials done mm. on vaccines using chocolate as the carrier. Apparently, badgers have a predilection for chocolate, mm. so that's how they vaccinate. So you vaccinate with chocolate. Yeah. Uh, what these fellows in England have been doing, they've been bringing nuts to the mouth of the set to draw yeah. them out, and they're developing a pattern of them coming out. And then after uh, a week of that, they come out to get the badger, and then they bang, 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 bang. bang. Culling is always controversial. Mm. Same with the foot and mouth. As I say, it is controversial, but TB is a very, very costly disease to the economy. Mm -hmm. Millions of pounds a year. Yeah. Is there any, any research been done that you know of? To uh, It's been with us since Adam was a boy. Um, research done to actually uh, remove it altogether, to find a cure, um, preventative. I remember hearing, I think when they started the TB test back in the 50s or 40s, uh, one in four animals were reactors. The old vets would tell you they could have walked into a buyer and picked out the animals that had TB, for they were thin, had a chronic cough, and mm. a very, very apparent. But for this past probably 20, 30 years, about one herd in 40 across Northern Ireland is a reactor herd, and that mm. has not decreased since. One in 40. Uh, they say it's partly due to wildlife vectors. Mm. Mm. And it has been eradicated in other countries, so it is possible. But the problem is, I don't know if they have the same wildlife vectors that they have here. Mm -hmm. Our red <coughs> kites are under a bit of an attack. Jim's coming in. Jim Wells is coming in to me soon to talk about it. He's the chairman yeah. of the raptor group. I can't understand why people want to poison these big birds. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the buzzards as well. Yeah. Uh, for they are beautiful, beautiful animals. But farmers seem to think that they're predatory and they lift lambs and whatever else. Which they don't, they don't lift that, uh, you know. <coughs> and also people with guns like to take a pot shot. Mm. I, I think it would be beyond comprehension for me to put the crosshairs on a buzzard or the crosshairs on a red kite and pull the trigger. I couldn't do it. I couldn't As do you it, say, yeah. they're beautiful creatures. They're beautiful. You Close know. up, they are magnificent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even sparrowhawks, you know, have that arrogance yeah. or steely. I, had, I wonder what this thing would have been that I... I was driving down the road to... Uh, St. John's Point on the southern shore of, uh, on the northern shore of, of Dundrum Bay. And I was driving down this narrow little road, narrow little and my window was down. Oh, it was a lovely summer's day. And I suddenly was aware there was a creature, I thought maybe a sparrow hawk. It was flying at the level of the open window at the same speed as the car, in the same direction as the car. And in its talons, it had held uh, a vole or whatever that was in the last moments of its life with this creature. I wonder what that might have been. Could be a sparrowhawk. Yeah. Smallish bird. Smallish bird, yeah. With a tight <coughs> little hook. The, the buzzard tail. now is a lot oh, bigger. They're you and I know the buzzard. Yeah. I had one nested in my garden about three years ago. Magnificent birds. Mm -hmm. and there's three or four of them fly yeah. about the place. Do you remember the day I brought you the buzzard? I do, yeah. That was someday. Mm -hmm. He had taken a dose of poison as well. and. Uh, the story there was he was on the he was on the uh, the road at narrow water in the middle of the road, and he was, he was standing like a, a kind of angel, you know, the, with the wings there. He this kind of dripped. Oh, he's just looking like this here, and uh, I, I parked the car and went to try and lift him off the road, but I took I took my coat and held the coat up between myself and him so that he couldn't see. The talons are wow. Tell me about it. But eventually he flew off towards the, the keep and then he was down against the wall and I came in. He couldn't see my eyes, I couldn't, but I knew really, I put the coat around him and wrapped him up in the coat, took him back in the car and uh, back to the car and suddenly realized I had locked the car and the keys of the car were in the pocket of the coat that the buzzard was wrapped in. So I had to maneuver the keys out. So having got him out, he was in a bad way and I brought him to you and uh, eventually the inevitable happened. Yeah. You had to put the creature down and let him go. Well, you would see quite a few with poisoning. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's a disgrace. Yeah. Is it allowed? Is it again? No, it's not allowed. <coughs> yeah. 
So it's an appeal really to farmers out there. Leave leave the wild birds alone. Exactly. Yeah, there's not, a, not much sense in it. Because if, if your economy, your, your, your whole farm economy is, is, is the better if you've got a diversification of, 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 of fauna there. It makes, it makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. So what's your day hold now? Clinic to 11 o'clock, and then there's a few operations in, and then a clinic again from 3 to half 5. Mm. Mm. Do you find uh, in the operating area that, I know the skill of the surgeon, working with an animal, it's the same skill, isn't it? Exactly. The You're same dealing skill. with nerves, flesh and bone, flesh and bone, yeah. blood supply, muscle. Give it to me any day over mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> mechanical being bones have been broken. Not even that. Not even bones. Sort of uh, electrical, you know, on the other side of things. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Rather than give me flesh, bones, anything. Yeah, that'll do it. Wiring a plug will bring me out in a cold sweat. <laughs> you're there with. I've this, there was a lad sitting where you're sitting yesterday, Raymond Matthews from uh, Hilltown, a student of St Coleman's College, and Raymond is the most wonderful musician and he was celebrating uh, his exams and all the rest of it he plays the oboe sat there and played the oboe i said what are you going to do when you grow up he said i'm going to be a surgeon he said lovely to hear that it is yeah young fellow with a an aspiration to to be involved in the healing profession and manual dexterity hugely <coughs> so yeah. i laughed i laughed the other day i would i would visit a consultant in belfast to keep an eye on my prostate uh, which all men of a certain age should do be aware of the that 80 percent of men in their 60 but in their late 60s 80 percent of men have prostate cancer that's the statistic dear friends so keep an eye on it but i remember when he was giving me very good news the uh very very good news uh he say he was seeing me out and uh, he went to shake my hand i went to shake his hand i said no i won't shake your hand he said well, what's wrong i said if i if everyone who comes in to you shakes your hand, you will find that arthritis will set in and that in a few years' time, a few years down the road, uh, you'll, your manual dexterity for your will operating <coughs> will be lost. It'll have gone, you see. So that's the thing there. Listen, you're good. Thank you for coming that's in. That's all, Ron. Thank we you let you go. Much. Sean's standing by with some music. For, oh, he's just wakened up. Well done, Sean. It's lovely <laughs> to see you. <laughs> I pull his leg. Go well. Take Ron, care. Thank you all very much. Best to you. Have a good day.